Okay. So this is the first session. So here uh, we'll be covering about uh, data warehousing concepts. Okay. So data warehousing uh, applications are built for analyzing the business. Okay. So not for uh, running the business. These applications are built for analytic purpose. So analytic purpose in the sense like you will make a decision based on the data that is available in the data warehouse. Obviously, data warehouse is nothing but a database, a storage location, data warehouse. The word data warehouse means data. Warehouse means a storage location, right? So we will be having different type of warehouses. So here, data warehouse. Data means data storage location. Okay. So what is the data that is uh, available here in the warehouse? The data that is available here is, which will help for the enterprises to analyze their business, to make a better business decisions based on the data that is present in the warehouse. Okay. So to make a better business decision, first of all, data should be available in the warehouse. Okay. So there are two teams basically involved to build data everything and business intelligence. So first team is like ETL team, data integration engineers, data, data integration team. Okay. So the data stage is a tool that comes under the category of data integration platform. Okay. So here the tool will help to driven and apply various data transformation to data transformation methods. And finally, it will move the data from our source system to the destination place. So that is the purpose of this data in integration team. Okay. And who is the next team? Next team is reporting team. Once the data is available, loaded in data warehouse, data warehousing tables, then the next step comes by reporting team. So basically what this reporting team will do, reporting team will prepare the reports based on the organization needs. Okay, so the reports are mainly analytics purpose. They can forecast their business based on the existing data. What is the sales revenue? Okay, so for this month, okay, uh, I mean last month, for the last month from May 1st to May, May 1st to uh, May 31st, okay, and for this month from Yesterday, I mean, from uh, June 1st to till date. Okay, so five days, what is my revenue? So these kind of uh, reports, uh, analytical reports, uh, the reporting team will be built. So to build uh, uh, basically any report for analyzing the business. So the four common questions that occurs for every business owner every business and any any company okay so here here they will be considered okay so the four key factors to make a decision so these applications are mainly uh, mainly designed for four key uh, key factors one is who is my customer okay so we can analyze the business based on my customer okay so if you take a wholesale retail outlets, so they will uh, sell the products to small, small shopkeeper vendors. Okay, so they will have a GST number registered. So in, in, in India, we'll be having a uh, Metro cash and carry. So let me open the tab website so that you will have clarity. Let's go to Google. Metro cash and carry. So this is a, see here our products, our customers, okay. So here, the main brand based on, uh, located in Bangalore, okay. So they have uh, different stores across India, okay. So what this uh, particular metro will do, uh, they will buy the products from respective manufacturing industry, 
and they will give subsidiary price to the small vendors. There will be a mediator between uh, uh, retailer to the uh, manufacturer. Okay, so they will give a profit margin of 25 percent. 20, I mean, like 10, 15 to 25 percent, there will be profit margin for. Uh, 20 to 20, 15 to 25 percent, there will be profit margin for each product. Okay, so normal people cannot uh, enter to shop here uh, to go and purchase the goods. People who has a business, so there should be a proper registration document like uh, a GST registration. Only those people they can allow and uh, they can go and purchase the products. Okay, so. So if, if the Metro want to analyze their business, they, they want to know who is a customer that is buying more goods, more products in our store. Okay. So then what is the way of analytics they can do? They, they can do well, what is the product that is uh, revenue is more. I mean, sales is more. What is the product? The sales is low. Okay. So they can analyze the business then based on the product and they can analyze the business time wise okay so time wise uh, when the business is happening more like weekdays or weekends okay so compared to last week to this week okay so today is monday right so us people still there in sunday maybe in another uh, one and a half hour or two hours they will move to monday so till yesterday okay so last week what is the business happening Okay, so what is the revenue? Weekly wise, day wise, they will compare. So they will compare the revenue between Saturday to Sunday. Okay, so like that, they can analyze the business. They can understand. So what went well and what went, uh, what did not went well. Okay, why the sales is low? low? Okay, so these kind of things, they can. Uh, this kind of things, I mean, like uh, based on the data that is available in the warehouse, so they can make a decision. Okay. And also they can analyze the business based on the location. Okay. So location wise, which store performing uh, uh, sales is sales volume is high, which is low. Okay. So these kind of uh, things that these data raising applications are built for this core four key principles so to understand my i mean like customer wise i can analyze my business product wise time wise and location wise okay so to study this you can take an example of metro okay you can consider the example of walmart also walmart any retail outlets they have more number of branches okay yeah so any questions here Now let's move. If you don't have any questions, let's uh, move to. Sir, yeah. Uh, data warehouse in low four teams on the other. Yes, yes. Uh, Andro ETL team, reporting team, Inka, Nita, two teams, and sir. Four teams, sir. Two teams. Well, there's basically two teams will be there. So, okay. team and reporting team. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, reporting team means uh, business objects, car news. This uh, tableau, voila, tableau is there, right? Tableau, click view, click sense. Okay, so these, uh, uh, these the people working on this uh, software, they are coming under the category of BA. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now let's move on to next topic characteristic features of, uh, characteristic features of data warehouse. Okay, so just now, uh, I have shared you, we can analyze the business based on the time, right? So what is the lowest level of granularity? So granularity means the low level of uh, way we can analyze the business. So lowest level of granularity is like day. Day-wise, we can analyze the business because so data that is present in the warehouse, we need to do the process.
processing has to happen okay and the applications has to update the system by end of the day normally business hours will close by 9 30 10 o'clock right so after 10 30 or 11 o'clock the ETL process will update the system okay so based on the architecture uh, what they built they will take at least uh, four to five hours it depends okay so four to six hours the whole night uh, just will keep on running okay so there will be a production support team that uh, they will take care of uh, monitoring the loads and all okay so by next day morning the business starts now so by nine o'clock or eight thirty the business will start right so by the time the data should be available okay so like that so now if you consider for us so now uh, the jobs will start uh, running okay so they will update their systems okay so here so we can analyze the business based on the time variant okay so the lowest level of granularity is like daily basis weekly basis monthly quarterly yearly okay so they will analyze the business so normally the society companies they will publish their results quarterly every quarterly results to the public so this is the revenue that we have generated public listed companies so public listed companies they have to publish their results to uh, public because uh, outside people are the investors right if we take an example of this infosys tcs hcl so it's these are public listed companies founders may be one or two people but uh, the shareholders are many people right so even i can invest i can buy shares right so they have they are accountable to share the results to every quarter to the public so they will compare the results between last quarter to this quarter okay so how many new customers we have acquired what is the percentage of uh, revenue uh, increase sometimes it will go by 10 percent revenue drop down due to client uh, client will terminate them because the sometimes performance issues so this and all will come into the picture. Sometimes revenue will go down. Okay. So new uh, customer acquisitions. So during that time, uh, revenue will go up five, five, plus five to ten percent. Okay. So this is one of the example for uh, time variant uh, data warehouse. Okay. So the next one is non-volatile. So here, uh, once the data is loaded into warehouse, we cannot make any changes. Okay. So data owner has to have full control. We need to take the approval from uh, data owner or product owner if you want to make any changes. Okay, so obviously, end of the day, we are loading the data into a table, right? Okay, so here, uh, these tables are only view only. Just they will give select access to us. We cannot make any changes. Even if you are a technical person, the data stage engineer, so they won't allow you to, to do the alteration in the production environment. Okay, so sometimes in the developer, especially in the banking projects, they won't allow to give you access for to access the production data also. Once the code uh, deployed in live. Okay, so there will be a production support team that will be taken care. Okay, so even you cannot open data stage also to see the uh, CEO jobs. Okay. So here, once the data is entered into warehouse, we cannot make any changes. So that is the reason here we'll be calling it as a non-volatile database, okay? So here you can see the differences between volatile and non-volatile. Volatile basically here, uh, once the data is entered here, we cannot make changes, okay? so to perform these operations, suppose new entry has to update in the system. Okay, so normally in databases to the warehouse here, so both records will maintain the data everything system. But in uh, volatile, it should be eight and nine thousand. So here the existing data will be overwritten in the traditional databases. Okay, 
so it won't maintain the history but in data warehousing system so we will maintain the historical data okay so if the employee got salary high so there is a thousand dollars increment earlier salary was eight thousand now uh, he got thousand dollars increment maybe a ten percent ten to twelve percent high so in data warehousing system in uh, will be maintaining both the records okay so here volatile means you need to remember we cannot make any changes but we will be maintaining both current and as well as historical data okay so another characteristic features of uh, data warehouse is another characteristic features of data warehouse is like subject oriented database which deals with a specific subject so we can build a data warehousing applications for any uh, subject area okay so if you take a company so company will have uh, sales they have so they have they need to something to sell okay so every business has something to sell okay for every okay so for a trader if you take an example of small uh, trader okay so small shop so he has different uh, provisions i mean like uh, household needs he is to sell something right so he needs to track that information so normally small uh, shopkeepers what they will do is uh, they will be writing so and so person uh, purchase this much am amount of uh, uh, products they will make a note of it because end of the day he wants to know what is the sales has happened i think the, these kind of things he have noticed okay so in uh, big companies so they can invest in technology so that uh, they can maintain all the data into digitalization okay so all the financial transaction they will maintain as a financial data warehouse and all the sales information they will track in sales data mode sales data warehouse okay so hr so to manage 2 lakhs 3 lakhs employees so they need a system right so hr hr human resource employment uh, data mart okay hr hr data mart so this big companies like hcl tcs infosys the, they will have almost 3 plus uh, 3 lakhs plus employees will be there so to man to manage them uh, okay so they need a system okay so to update their uh, personal details okay so they they want to update their salary details okay so what is their project allegation okay so all information is stored in an application but the data is stored in warehouse okay so to update the system so each uh, if you if you make some changes like uh, you all edit the address okay so i have changed my location so to update the system they will take uh, maybe uh, at least half an hour every half an hour uh, jobs will keep on running so okay so then what happens data will be updated in the portal right so they will fetch the data from the warehouse portal okay and coming to the banks uh, credit card system okay so and also loans so loans comes under different category of loans mortgage loans and uh, personal loans so personal loans are in secured loans and uh, home loans so all this are maintained in a uh, one subject area comes under the one subject area okay so these data warehousing applications are mainly built for a specific subject area okay and the next characteristic features of uh, data warehouse is integrated uh, database so what does it mean by integrated so here will be collecting from uh, different different tables data and loading into uh, data warehousing tables okay so here to enterprise data warehouse cdw means it will be having different subject areas okay so finance sales hr okay so all this uh, information are integrated in a single database that will be called as a integrated database 
Okay. So, any questions here? Are you able to? So, yeah, sir. Yeah. You mentioned finance sales in the third point, right? So, each uh, finance will have its own data warehouse. Sales will have its own data warehouse. HR will have yes. its own data warehouse, right? Yes. And yes. in the in the and in the fourth point, you are mentioning that uh, it's an integrated database. I mean, you took an example collecting all those finances, which are loans, and so into a database. In a different in a database only with different different uh, tables. Okay. So okay. yeah. project wise, data warehousing project wise, it will be uh, tables will be different, right? Like four dimension yeah. four, four dimension tables, five dimension tables, and surrounded by one fact table. So, okay. yeah, enterprise wise, there will be one data warehouse. Uh, you can consider example of Teradata or Snowflake DB. So nowadays, companies yeah. are moving towards cloud, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. They are integrating towards uh, cloud uh, DBs, BigQuery or Snowflake DB. Okay. So here, subject wise, uh, uh, tables wise, it will be separated, but all are integrated in a one layer. Yeah, got you. I mean, it's, it's Snowflake is a good example, yeah. And it can it can contain individual uh, tables, individual yes. databases. Individual databases, yes. Snowflake, and I can take an example of Oracle also Teradata. Teradata. Yeah, yeah. Teradata yeah. is also one of the powerful databases in RDBs. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, any other questions? What about others? Tarun, are you able to follow? Siva, Sarath? Yeah, fine, sir. Uh, okay. Manikanta, are you able to follow? Everything is away. This is one of the problems with the online coaching. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, we will watch the recording later. Okay, right. Yes, yes, yes. No questions are there. Okay. Now, let's move on to. So this is the integration I told you, right? They are combining to a one uh, warehouse. Sales, finance. Okay. So why we build this application it means uh, to make a decision, business decision based on the data they can forecast. Uh, what we, what is the expected revenue? So companies has a target to generate this much revenue in the next quarter. Okay. So from, from here 2025, our company should be $100 billion company. The company is $70 billion company. They will keep a target. So we should be the global leaders and it should be that, that, that. They will have a strategic vision to achieve $100 billion companies. Sometimes uh, due to crisis, it may downfall or it may go up, it depends, right? So these data everything applications are mainly built for making a decision. It make a, uh, will make a decision based on the data that is present in the warehouse. Once we view the report, these decisions are taken by middle level management and above, department heads and top level management. Okay, so they will take a decision with the data. Okay, so that is the reason we'll be calling that as a decision supporting system. Data everything is a decision supporting system. And here, as I told you, like it's uh, it can only uh, you can only I mean like to we only access I mean like just. Only they will provide select access. So we cannot alter the data. Okay, so once the data is entered into warehouse, we cannot make any changes. Okay, so normally fact tables, uh, reports and all fetch it from the fact tables. Fact and uh, sometimes dimension tables. Okay, so if you want to make any changes in the fact table, you have to make changes in the dimension table first because from the dimension table only data is loading into fact table. If you try to change in the fact table, uh, it won't, uh, it won't, the data won't be accurate. 
okay first let's uh, let's make changes in the dimension table okay to make the data alteration and all we need to have proper approvals we need to have product owner approval data owner approval from the business side from the technical point of view you need to have architect up to architect has to uh, from the client side he has to approve why why why, why you are making this change is there any is there any impact from the business point of view okay so based on that they will make uh, changes in the system so they will uh, alter the data first in the dimension tables once the data is updated in the dimension table they will rerun the fact load process fact data load process fact and summary okay then only they can view the data accurate data okay now let's see the differences between databases to data warehouse so here databases operational databases here we will be calling it as a oltp system okay so data warehousing applications will be calling it as a oltp system online analytical process so here oltp so what does it mean by oltp so if you see any uh, software uh, any billing software that is present in the retail outlets okay so dmart or uh, walmart what what uh, any mart okay so there is a software to scan your products and generate the invoice so those application will be calling it, calling it as a oltp online online ol online transaction processing so transaction means day to day business activities so continue okay so those applications will be calling as a oltp okay so those applications are mainly de de designed for uh designed for mainly to run the business okay so they cannot make any decision okay so of the data so those applications are mainly de designed for to run the business that's it but the back end the data is stored in somewhere in a database or a file so what data integration engineers will do is they will extract the data and apply it to transformation tool and load it into data warehouse okay so transformations in the sense in the demonstration i have discussed aggregations uh, okay data merging data cleansing okay so they will will be having uh summarize the data so calculate calculated data so that is present in the warehouse okay so they will make a business decision based on this uh oilap the data present in the warehouse so oilap systems are mainly decision supporting systems okay so here in uh, you can make alteration in the oltp system but in oilap we not cannot make any alteration if you want to make a alteration we have to you have to go through some approval process okay and what is the data that is present in the oltp the data that is present in the oltp is current data it does not have historical data but in oltp olap will be having current data as well as historical data okay and here will be having detailed data okay so in data warehouse both will be maintained detailed data as well as summary data summary data is not available in oltp system okay so this is one of the common interview question what is the differences between oltp and olap okay so we should be able to share this differences in the interview hmm? just a moment
So the next, so this is the basic flow from source to target. Okay, so normally we have a source data. So here uh, this uh, OLTP applications data is stored in somewhere, and we are picking the data. We are picking the data from source, okay? And from source, again, what we are doing is, we are applying transformation rules. Okay, so in transformation rules, uh, we'll apply various data filters, okay? So data validations, okay? And data calculations, data sorting. So all kind of data transformations will apply in the data transformation stages and finally data will be loaded into warehouse data warehouse okay and this reporting team they will query the data in a form of view so for them now we won't give access uh, to a table so we'll be creating a view for a main table we'll be creating a view on that view we will be creating a semantic layer okay so they they are they don't have access to a table. So they will be access to, access to only views. They can access the data from views. From there, they will develop the reports. Okay, fetching the data from the warehouse. And based on organization needs, they will develop the reports. Once the reports are developed, they will uh, prepare uh, to, they will give access to these uh, department heads and uh, top level management. So they will uh, click with their view of the reports and they will analyze and make a decision. Okay. So this is the flow. Okay. So now data acquisition. So to, to load the data into warehouse, we need to have a, a mechanism, right? Where we need to, where we will get the data. What are you trying to do with the data? and where you are going with the data okay so where you are getting the data what are you doing with the data and where where you are going with the data so here to build uh, this data warehousing application we need a process called data acquisition we need to acquire the data somewhere that means extraction and applies transformation rules we don't need all the data that is present in the source we need only the data that will help us uh, to in a useful business format. Okay. So if that is the case, we need to apply to transformation rules. Okay. So now let's see what are the sources data extraction methods. So normally initially uh, we'll be here this data acquisition uh, process will be calling it as a ETL extraction transformation and loading so that is the final name so initial uh, when uh, the organization uh, i mean like the it it came into the market in 1990s during that period so ett etm are the 
abbreviations they have given uh, for the ETA, for this data acquisition process. So the finally where uh, they come up with a name called ETL. So that is data extraction, transformation, and loading. Okay. Okay. So what are the tools are there? So these are geo-based tools and code-based tools. Okay. So geo-based tools are you can see in demonstration we have discussed about this. So Informatica, Data Stage, Oracle Data Integrator, and etc. Combination. Oracle Warehouse Builder, Body, Business Object Data Integrator. And code-based ETL tools are SQL, PL, SQL. These are comes under the Teradata utilities. These are purely coding. Okay. So, and SAS. SAS is also statistical analytical software is SAS. So, here it is like uh, code-based uh, tool. Okay. Code-based software. Just a second. Okay, so here ETL. So there will be phases. So here to extract data from source and load it into staging area. So again, from staging area, we'll be loading the data into warehouse. Okay. There will be phases from source to staging, staging to data warehouse like that. Okay. Source systems. We need to extract the data. There will be a source where we will read the data. Okay. So here, there are two types of sources, internal sources and external sources. Internal sources are databases. External sources are files. Okay. So external sources are files. External sources are files. Okay. So external sources are files. So what are those files? Flat file, text files. Okay, XML, sections, and all. And where the data also load writing into destination place. Okay, so that we will call the target system. Okay, so this is a basic architecture of uh, enterprise data warehouse. Okay, so you can see here. Enterprise data warehousing architecture. So here we'll be extracting the data from different uh, different sources and apply. Uh, I mean, load the data into staging area. Again, from staging area, data will be loaded into warehouse. Data will be loaded into warehouse. Okay. So here you can see different different sources. So normally in uh, data warehousing applications, sometimes we'll be extracting data from files. Sometimes we'll be extracting data from Excel sheets. Okay. So customer will send an Excel sheet and I want this Excel sheet should be loaded into a table. Then you have to make it ready. Okay. And Oracle, sometimes for reference tables, we may connect to transaction processing tables. Okay. So from other databases also, okay? And staging area, we'll be loading into staging area. Again, from staging area, we'll be loading into data warehouse, okay? So here from source to staging, there will be no business logic involved. Most of the cases, data will be dumped into staging area. So from source, we cannot directly load the data into data warehouse. We need to load the staging area. Again, from staging area, we'll be loading data into warehouse. Okay. 
So extraction transformation. So let's come to the transformation. So data transformations are data merging, data cleansing, data scrapping, and data aggregation. So what is meant by data merging? So data merging means combining two input uh, files. Okay. So here I have a data like this, dissimilar structure. I want to join two tables to get the report into, uh, to load the data in a single table. I need to view the, instead of viewing the data in a two tables, I need the data in one table. Customer will ask like that. I don't want boss. I don't want to fetch two times and uh, this thing. Please load it in a single table so that I can uh, view my data. Okay. So to handle this, there should be a common column name. Data should be similar. Okay. So I will make a joint condition to merge the data. And data will be reflected in out uh, in output in a single table. Okay, so that is data matching. Similarly, when it is having similar structure. Okay, I need all the data to be combined. So I cannot uh, in source I, in source having two file two tables data, but uh, I, I need all the data in a single table. So that is the customer request. So you cannot view the two tables separately separately. Let it have in one table. Okay, so he, he can demand anything. So we're able to solve his problems, right? So this is data merging. This comes under the transformation process and cleansing. So here sometimes data will receive in a regular format. So all are small letters, sometimes all are big letters. Okay, so sometimes there will be a combination of small letters and big letters. So let it make uh, one standard format, all are cap locks. Our first letter is cap locks and rest of the letters should be small. So based on the client request, we need to clean our data, cleanse our data and load it into warehouse. Okay. And here you can see the sales amounts here. So they are not in proper order. So in source I have seen After decimal point, we have three digits. One is having one digit and the other one does not have any value. Okay. So if that is the case, we need to have a standard format. We need to standardize our data. Because if customers see the data like this, then he will, he will write a question. Can you make it in uh, this thing? Can you make it in a single standard format? Something like that. So that time what you need to do is you need to use some rounding off function so that you can need to adjust ability of your data and load it into a destination place. Okay. So the next one is scrubbing. Okay. So calculations. We will do data calculations. The, okay. So for integer de decimal data type. Okay. Suppose if you see the input here, sale ID, product name, quantity, sale amount. But uh, I need uh, in my target sales tax. So sales tax is calculated in the transformation level. So 1% is a sales tax. Okay. So normally in, in, in India, we'll be having GST, goods and service tax. Okay. So if you go to a big shop, so there will be GST bill that is collected from you. Okay. You can see GST based on the product. Uh, it will be 5%, 5% to 28%. Even some products are 42% uh, also tax. They have to help from the customer. So if you buy for more than uh, 40 inches TV, then it comes under the category of luxury. So they have to collect GST from the customer 28%. Okay. All online classes, teachings and all uh, we have to pay 18% GST to the customer. Okay. So if you, if your fees is 15,000, in that 15,000, 18% uh, have, we have to pay to GST to the government. So that is taxable. Okay. So nowadays everything has been digitalized. The, the, I mean, like uh, banks are monitoring each account. What is the amount that he is getting? We have to file the IT returns properly. So here, 
this sales information, sales tax. So this sales tax we are not receiving from source. We need to update it in the target. We need we need those column in the target. But where we will derive the data? Will derive the data in the transformation level. Okay. So in practical sessions, uh, you can understand better on these assignments. Okay. So if you don't understand now, now also that's okay. Okay. So during that time, I will uh, show you with an example. Okay. So this is data scoping. The next one is aggregation. So uh, anyone has idea idea about uh, aggregation functions in uh, SQL? What are the aggregation functions? Tarun? Uh, Aggreg some average of us, sir. Uh, yes, yes, some average, yes. Minimum max. Max, yes. Count. Some count. Average count. Okay. So these are aggregation functions. So similarly, we have to apply the same concepts in uh, data stage also. Okay. Someone text or something. Yeah, right. Okay. Aggregations. And the next one is finally. We are loading into data into warehouse. So loading means what? We are writing the data, right? Loading comes under the category of loading comes under the category of uh, writing the data into warehouse, target system, destination. Okay. So any other questions? Any other questions, any doubts? Okay. 